And that is allowed in democracy. <laughs> now we gave notice I don't have to that we are probably going to protest at least to meet our leaders to tell them how it is biting us. That the poor can no longer preach. And what we have been getting has been threats. Threats from the Ministry of Justice that it is content for Nigerians to protest. And we have told them of various case laws, especially the one of AFP versus the Nigerian police, where the appeal court ruled and eloquently that no court can stop Nigerians from protests and rally. And that's the law. It went further, the appeal court went further to argue that Nigerians don't need police permit to do their rally or protest. And that it is the duty of the police to protect them. That we have expressed, that we have expressed here today. This morning, while focus are trying to come out for protest, the police block them out, those coming from Mararaba and others. Eh? Police and army. They couldn't assess the venue of the protest. This is a democratic government. All of us were involved in the fight against the military for democracy to come. And we should not be victims in this democratic dispensation. To us in its Congress, and we have to explain this to the National Assembly, at the gate of the National Assembly, for almost one hour, the police refuse us entry. All entreaties made to come and see you people to deliver a letter. The police said no. Nigeria is not a police state. We can't degenerate to that position. And it is our duty by what we have displayed today to show that Nigeria is a free state where workers can express their views, protest do rally to come and bring their grievances to the leadership of the National Assembly that we have expressed without going further into all these distractions because I know there are a lot of them, a lot of threats we are passing through. We need to read the letter we brought to the National Assembly. Well, the letter we wrote is a part a lengthy letter, but we we'll read the demands. Yes. Uh -huh. We remain the demands. Our demands to cut each other. Maybe a few points demand about six or seven. After we formally hand it over to the National Assembly, so, sorry, to the Senate. We demand the immediate implementation in good faith of all resolutions with Congress jointly signed with the government and TUC. Immediate reversal of all anti-poor policies of government, including 
the recent hike in PMS price, school fees, and VAT. Now, when we talk about recent hike, there was a hike of 520. 540. 540. For which a committee was set up by the government. For which the government went to court and got injunction. For which the court announced that status quo should remain. And the court has not met between that time and now. Two adjournments, the court did not meet. And one of the parties went ahead to increase again. 617. We have come here to protest that very issue because we are not going to strike for 617 and we are going to consider that option after now. Yes. Because the issue of strike and court order was all around 520 and we have not even addressed it. One party went ahead to increase again. So it's like saying two fighting, stop fighting, and another person went ahead to give another blow. That is where we are today. We now have to, we have to look at the law. Distinguished senators, the law that says when you beat a child, if the child cries, you punish him again. I enter agreement with you, you fail to implement, I cry, if I may be going on strike, you punish me. I want the National Assembly to look into this, the Senate to look into this. What it is in order. It is happening to ASU now. We had an agreement with ASU since 2009. It was not implemented. ASU went on strike. We imposed them with no, no work, no pay. Now you are the beneficiary of your incompetence and your refusal to obey the agreement. Necessity cry, especially when they waited for almost 10 years. We have to respect the entity of our agreements. The fixing of all local refineries, Potakot, Wari, and Kaduna. In the entire statement by Mr. President, no comment was made on this. And we can't continue to run an import driven a, a, a petroleum system, sorry, a energy system. It will depend on what they call the values of the markets. If the dollar goes for 1,000 naira per dollar, they will import at that rate and increase it and tell you it's market forces. Who is market forces? Now you don't want to, now you don't want us want to know who is market forces. Because, and then by the time you equally maintain a single market, where everybody will go to that market to exchange and report, then the Naira is gone. PMS seem to be life wire of the economy of Nigeria. And this is a, a natural resource that was given to us. We have no business refining abroad. We have no business importing PMS. There are over 200 commodities or products that will come out from refining of petroleum products. Nigeria is not benefiting from it. We are subsidizing workers from other countries where refining is taking place. You have just cassava in your farm, you sell cassava and you buy garlic. That's the economy we are running here. It's unacceptable. You have to think of it. Totally related to this was the agreement we agreed on CNG, compressed natural gas. Nigeria has a large deposit of gas that will last for the next 500 years. And now by our last assessment in 2020, a liter will cost as much as 90 naira. In the current rate, a liter will not cost more than 150. And that was an agreement we signed with the government that we should explore the CNG gas option as an alternative. Instead of forcing every Nigerian to buy at 600 and 30 and 40 and whatever rate. That should be alternative. Those who want PMS can go for PMS. And by that time, we had an agreement. We did a pilot study in Edo. Over 5,000 vehicles are running on CNG in Edo. And I don't know what it will cost this government to do even 1 million, convert 1 million cars within three months for us to go take that option. Some people are frustrated it to compel all of us to use PMS. Yes, yes. We are only asking for the release of the Act 
months without salaries of university lecturers and workers. Yeah. Very important. Very highly women. People cannot even manage their salaries to the end of the month. And now you see somebody's salary for eight months. The National Assembly, the Senate, should please you know, look into this matter to help us. To accord priority recognition and support to the Presidential Steering Committee and work of its subcommittees. Since the committee was set up, no subcommittee has concluded work. It may interest you that the, Mr. President said they are having talks with Labour who have not met at the Labour subcommittee. The committee has not been inaugurated. And the subcommittee is to talk on wage and work. Because minimum wage enjoys is a, a national legislation. When we discuss minimum wage, it comes to the National Assembly for you to pass it into law. The existing minimum wage will expire by next year. So we can't wait till next year. So as a matter of palliating or cushioning the effects of this subsidy, there is what is called wage award. It is known in this country, the Doji Award was there. Even this January, the federal government gave 40% of salary increase to its workers to cushion the effects of the COVID-19. This is done. We need to discuss this and bring that as a palliative. Yes, some have received some authority, but they did it. So we need to. That committee in the history of this country, labor negotiation is headed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation. Never in the history of this country has a uh, Chief of Staff to the President headed committee in this country to discuss with labor because it's very busy. From a Kaite to King Gibe, to an employer, an to post Mustafa. Never will you bring a chief of staff to the president who is very busy to come and negotiate with Labour. He doesn't have time because of state matters. Nigerians should look at this and look at how these things are done before now. Because if we don't bring this matter here, you will be seeing us as troublemakers. That is not the case. You know, things are not happening. We need to bring it to the fore. We have only asked for, for us to look at putting a stop to all the human actions and policies of the government. Mr. President talked about uh, 1 trillion Naira saved. The committee where we are meeting, they told us that no one cover is saved. Therefore, we are not agreed on what to pay anyway. So who do we believe? Is it the committee? Is it Mr. President? We are going to believe Mr. President. So that one trillion, we need to look at it, what we are going to do with it. But this inconsistency in pronouncements is not the best for us. We have properly looked at the issue of refineries. Young men in the, in the Niger Delta are refining. And we have said, let us license them. They call them illegal refineries. We say, no, let us legalize illegality. Let us form a group, register them, license them, and get a standard organization to monitor the product that is coming down there. Refining is not a, a rocket science. We can do it here, but people are frustrating it. Comrades, on and on and on. We may even seek further discussion with the Senate. But in the event of what is happening now, we need to bring this to the attention of the National Assembly, to the attention of the Senate, because various efforts were made for us not to everybody come and tell you what is happening, for us not to tell Nigerians what is happening. Oh, thank God we are here. But I think we should not be provoked beyond this. The country is ours. It belongs to all of us, and every Nigerian should enjoy the dividend of democracy. Thank you very much. Solidarity.